has our, our pink Zerg in the bottom right position. Um, spawning, uh, coming in for Millennium, it is Matalisk. And spawning in the top left position, the man with the carriers, winning game number one pretty decisively and, and, and pretty awesomely to boot, uh, to watch that. It is White Raw. So White Raw moving his first probe down. Should see another Forge Fast Expand. White Raw's not a very cheesy guy. Um, goes for the creative builds, but as we saw in game number one, you know, you can you can go for a Nexus first and still still do a 10-minute double carrier attack. So this is definitely going to be, hopefully, another awesome game. Uh, Matalisk, it doesn't look like she wants to go for anything crazy either. Whirlwind is a very large map, and I think this, this is... It's, I'd say it's actually equally favorable, in all honesty, for Zerg versus Protoss. The third base is still uh, pretty pretty damn open. Uh, I feel like it's not quite as large of an angle of attack for the um, <laughs> Atlas realizing hidden third base, White Raw's ninja, that she was not able to scout over the course of that game, really helped him build that scary, scary army. And now the Forge is coming up. White Rose is going to play a little bit on the safe side of things. He's actually sending out a second probe to scout. Um, really wants to find Matalisk in case that in case she's doing anything um, aggressive. Um, but possibly if uh, Matalisk tries to go for a 15 hatch, he could attempt to punish this with a cannon rush. Not, not quite as likely. Uh, Matalisk, however, is going to open up with a, a pretty normal timed spawning pool. Um, White Rose saying luck. Um, but as I was saying, the third base, there's just a, such a wide angle of attack. It can make dealing with Roach Hydra pressure very difficult. Um, it's very easy to be caught out of position with your army, waste force fields, etc. Um, and <laughs> made 1,000 Zerglings and didn't scout. And White Ra, his classic smiley face. We do have the Nexus on the way for our Ukrainian Protoss, though, before the cannon. Trying to be as economical as he can. Actually being a bit uh, recognizing, okay, well, you're going for a fast expand. I don't need my cannon that fast. He's going to get his gateway up as well. This will allow him to just tech uh, barely, barely faster. Not a huge difference. But we should see double gas follow up for White Raw. Maybe he has something special up his sleeves for this game. Um, you know, I said in game number one, White Raw really favors the new Stargate units. I've casted many a match of this guy, and he just loves them. So. Maybe he has another special build up his sleeve. Madeline's gonna go take a very fast third base. Nothing unusual there. She's kind of anticipating though that White Raw, um, <clears throat> not doing anything crazy and does scout the Nexus. So it's a pretty pretty well calculated decision. Queen throws the inject. Gonna head down towards the natural expansion for any kind of possible defense. Um, and well, nothing nothing crazy yet out of these players. Matalisk able to get that third base at a, at a pretty pretty nice time. I think it's going to be a bit easier for her to defend it on this map, just because um, it's such a it's such a larger map, and the center tower will really help with spotting anything coming, uh, such as another carrier play. But White Raw, he sees the third base. He knows everything that's going on in this game so far. Zealot on the way, as well as the cybernetics core. Um, gas is being mined in the main base. So when White Raw's uh, cybernetics core completes. We'll see. Most likely going to be another Stargate. Um, we super surprised if White Rod decided to go for anything like Robotics Facility or Twilight on this map. Um, just because of how large it is. Opening Phoenix just gives you a lot of uh, mobility, versatility in terms of being able to pick off the overlords that Matalisk has strewn across the map. As well as just being fast enough to make the size of the map not really that big of a deal. Um, probe coming in. Going to be coming home for White Raw. Uh, and Matalisk's third is done. Drone production primarily going. We do have the two gas geysers going to complete at six minutes for Matalisk once again. So the same style of opener out of our Millennium Zerg that we saw in game number one. But um, is she going to be able to hold off any kind of any kind of timing from White Raw? There we have the six minute Stargate starting for our Protoss player. Um, Matalisk sees that she actually hasn't taken. Uh, the gas in his natural just yet. Sees it being taken right now. Um, Cannon going to poke away at the Zergling. And uh, we do have the Sentry coming in for White Raw. And this is pretty standard opening. Um, Matalisk kind of recognizes at least that are no fast upgrades for White Raw is a, a bit of a tell. Of course, it won't be anything like a gateway timing. Um, and the gas being so quickly clutched by White Raw. We could see him go for some sort of similar style. Um, 
Actually, really curious what he's going to do with this. Yeah, second Stargate coming in. Will there be such a fast Flea Beacon, though? It does not seem so. Void Ray opening this game. Looks like White Raw wants to go for a bit of a faster timing. Not quite as slow of a build as the Carrier play, but using the Void Rays to try to deny that third base even faster. You know, if, if Matalus prepares herself for the 10-minute double Carrier timing uh, based on game number one, White Raw might be able to hit just early enough to actually uh, almost metagame that. So, we will have to see. The lair is about to complete. Zergling Speed is on the way. Double Evolution Chamber going to be queued up for Matalisk. And she has a Macro Hatchery on the way. This is going to allow her to get a lot of extra units out. And in all honesty, with a map of this size, uh, Creep Spread is going to be pretty important for keeping Hydralisks mobile um, if she chooses to go for that, that unit composition. Just because... Uh, a fast Protoss fleet moving across some of these these cliffy areas can do large amounts of damage. And, well, White Rod, he's just chronoing out Void Rays. He is going to pick off this Overlord. Matalisk now knows there are Void Rays on the field. Robotics facility coming in. Um, something we didn't really see last game. So this could be uh, just a very fast Void Ray Colossus um, build. He is going to take a pretty quick third. 8 minutes, 46 seconds. Not bad at all. Matalisk is not aware of this by, by any means. And the thing is... He can force a bit of an overreaction if Matalisk assumes that the Void Rays will be coming towards her base soon. And they are, but uh, this may come off to her as being a more aggressive build than anything. And White Rot taking this third behind is, is a very nice play. Of course, no ninja base this game. Matalisk will uh, hopefully be a little bit more worry of such a play. Um, no fast upgrades, though, for the Void Rays like we saw in game number one. Um, Matalisk is going to run a couple of Zerglings. Uh, does not see that Mothership Core. So White Rock gets in unnoticed. The next Void Ray, though, will be spotted as well as the third. And Zergling is going to run towards the natural. Won't be too much as he gets to the third base. And now Matalisk knows there is a third coming up. Uh, does not actually see the Nexus itself, but... Uh, Gateway Wall is being prepared as well as a Photon Cannon for White Rock. Now moving in with three Void Rays and a Mothership Core. Very, very interesting setup. The Spire is coming in as well as a lot of Zerglings. It does not look like Matalisk wants to go for any kind of Hydralisk play. Um, she prefers to stick to this uh, this Corruptor Ling style. Um, we could see her go for something like Mutalisks, but with White Rai having so many, uh, so much Stargate production, it, it should be so difficult to actually get much done. But the Zerglings are running in towards the third base. Now going to try to shut this down. Do a little bit of damage that she was not able to do in game number one. The Zealots holding strong for now. He doesn't have any upgrades on them. And the Zerglings are able to do a lot of damage. The cannon will be taken down. White Rock could have his third base denied. At the same time, he is moving down towards Matalisk's third. Kills the Queen. The uh, Prismatic Alignment going to help kill this hatchery so quickly. And Matalisk uh, having a bit of difficulty here. There's too many Zealots. Just slowing down these Zerglings, and the more time White Rot has, he can just warp in more units and defend this. More Zerglings being rallied over, but Matalisk's third hatchery will fall. She is uh, going to be completing her Spire soon. Infestors are on the way with Burrow, but ooh, there's just so many Zerglings from Matalisk in White Rot's third. A lot of probes are going to fall now, taking out uh, some of the Zealots, using the recall ability to go back, and White Rot, uh, going home after killing the third, will be able to defend it. Quite handily, these Void Rays are going to give a lot of defensive options, and of course, uh, he'll soon have enough energy for Photon Overcharge. Nice defense by White Rot. Matalisk did kill a good amount, uh, killed a good amount of probes as well. Just looking at some numbers here. Nine probes killed, but eight drones killed by White Rot. Not really uh, an economic advantage being caused by worker kills here. And White Rot with a third base now, and Matalisk having to rebuild this hatchery, and now taking another one in the very bottom left of the map. Could find herself in a bad spot and kind of saying, hey, you want to take a hidden hatchery? I'm, I mean, hidden nexus. I'll take the hidden hatchery and try to try to get some sort of lead back. Now, nine, ten infestors coming out for Matalisk. Um, trying to use the fungal growth to lock down the air army. But I, I feel like we saw in game number one, the, the amount of DPS behind it needs to be bumped up a little bit. Uh, the Void Ray count is already starting off pretty fresh. So, uh... If Matalisk goes for Corruptors, these could be hurt quite a bit. We also have Colossi, uh, Colossi being produced by White Raw. He has the first one on the way now. The third base is saturated for, uh, for Papa Ra. He's going to get another Photon Cannon to defend the third base's wall. Templar Archives is coming in as well as that Extended Thermal Lance and the plus two weapons. So we do not actually have a plus 2-2 two, two started yet for Matalisk. White Rod will be able to secure a lead in upgrades very soon. 
um, if she does not do so. Bottom left base is complete, as well as the original third location. Madeline's just, basically what she needs to do is just get a very healthy drone count on these on these bases and just hope that not too strong of a push comes from White Raw before she can get her economy um, paid off, really. Uh, so it'll take about two minutes of mining for the drones to really uh, start giving, he giving her some useful income. And she's going to try to put some pressure on with these Zerglings running towards that third base area. The natural is uh, blocked out pretty well. There is a Zealot there. We do have uh, White Rose Army building up some Archons with these Void Rays and the Colossus um, very nicely. And Madeline's going to try to push it through the Zealot, but ooh, now she will be able to spot the, the Colossus. Uh, which will kill off these Zerglings, not too big of a deal. White Raw adding on another robotics facility, shoving away these Zerglings using the Time Warp, and the Infestor's walking straight into it, going to be slowed down. Man, you thought these things were slow before. Um, a lot of Infestors here, though, and Madalus could be trying to make something happen right now. Throwing down a Fungal Growth, we'll be able to catch uh, the whole army. Throwing down Infested Terrans as well, and moving in the Zerglings. She wants to try to stop this force. She needs to get another Fungal Growth, though. The Infested Terrans do a good amount of damage, but uh, they don't get the upgrades that she has. And with the upgrades for White Rock, it could be hard to push in here. So many Infested Marines, but Ma uh, White Rock just step stutter stepping away from the Infested Terrans. They do move quite slowly. Um, she will be able to kill off a couple of these units, but I don't think she's going to be able to deny this third base. Oh, goodness. Uh, taking out a lot of the Zealots, but the Colossi and Void Rays remain. Natalisk. Putting on a bit of pressure here, trying to slow down White Raw from the maxing from maxing out. She is saturated on three bases. And needs to saturate one of her gas geysers. But the bottom left base, she's got to get some drones there. Really needs to get an economic advantage in this game because right now being saturated on three bases isn't going to cut it for Matalisk. She's even on economy with White Raw, and now White Raw building up such a cost-effective army of Colossi Void Ray, uh, double Colossi and double Void Ray production on going on at the same time is really going to give him an advantage the longer this game goes on. And now, Papa Ra taking a fourth Nexus. And, you know, by the time this fourth Nexus completes, uh, if Madalus doesn't have this droned up, it's basically going to still be an even economy game. And Madalus will need to take a fifth base. And she's running around with a lot of Zerglings, but White Raw has had most of his defensive points checked pretty well. She will run over, spot, spot this fourth base, but going to run right into the Colossi. Needs to be careful with plus two attack. These bad boys completely destroy Zerglings. Um, uncontested, almost basically, basically pretty much just one shotting them. Uh, Zealots whooped in in a form of a wall to stop the Zerglings from getting by. And now the Colossi going to catch the rest of these, and all the Zerglings from Madalisk are gone. White Rot securing a supply lead, and uh, Madalisk is uh, she's in a bit of a rough spot. She is now getting up a fifth hatchery, uh, beginning to produce corruptors. But we saw in game number one, the corruptors get so so badly wrecked by those void rays. Um, the Colossi are actually going to help Matalisk in, in, the, in the sense that since there's less supply in air units, there won't be as many Void Rays to go for the, the prismatic alignment. But Wyrod now setting up a very nice wall. He has been on top of this with all of his bases. He takes the Nexus, he immediately throws up the whole entire wall to make sure it can't be forced to be canceled or shut down at any point if he chooses to make his army leave that zone. And... Well, now moving in, saturating these gas geysers. Additional production going up for White Rot in the form of six gateways, plus three attackers coming in, as well as charge. And it looks like he wants to just round out his army here with just his upgrades. Uh, observers are coming onto the field to make sure that these uh, burn infestors aren't able to do too much damage. He's going to send a zealot force out to attack towards um, checking. Actually, it looks like just the rest of the bases on the left side of the map. The observers are moving in, as well as a probe for proxy pylons. And looks like White Rot could be getting ready to go for a big attack. Uh, sometime in the near future. He could, of course, try to play this in more turtle style, but Matalisk's army composition uh, is going to need a perfect engagement to deal with this. The Corruptors deal a, a good amount of damage to the Void, to the, to the Colossi, but they don't get bonus damage to the Void Rays. Uh, that just is, is one of the things that makes Prismatic Alignment so strong, um, and one of the reasons why a lot of Korean Zerg players have been going for Roach Hydralisk Viper. Um, we do now have Adrenal Glands coming up for Matalisk, getting the rest of her Zergling upgrades in order. She does have 2-2, and it looks like she might be trying to push in here. This is, uh, this could be a bit of a tricky engagement. The Colossi, are ready to fry these lings like it's nobody's business. Hits a fungal on the Void Rays. A storm dropping on the Corruptors. So much damage from these storms. The Void Rays do look like they will fall, though, but so many storms. Will she be able to kill them off now? Trying to split up the Corruptors a bit. There's no more anti-air remaining, and Matalus should be able to kill the Colossi off here. But White Raw has such an economy, and now the, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, the... Archons are coming up here to deal with the rest of these Corruptors. Takes a lot of damage. Matalisk is able to kill off all of uh, all of the Void Rays for White Raw. Uh, 
Uh, not bad at all, but not able to kill the Colossi means those Zerglings still not terribly effective. She's going to immediately um, spend all her larva, dump it into more Zerglings, trying to get up as much unit production as he can. And White Rod now going for a fifth Nexus on the right side of the map is, uh, is following up with his economy as well. And now the Archon moving in with the charge lots and a couple of Stalkers. Matalus running in now, going to get a decent surround on some of these guys, uh, bringing the Infestors forward. Does have a couple Fungal Roots available if White Raw overextends. Um, Matalus's Corruptors may be weak, but they are still quite potent against these massive units. So 10 more Corruptors on the way, plus three Flyer Attacks and six Broodlords for Matalisk. A very dangerous game to be playing going for Broodlords in this matchup, but she basically wants to use, uh, you know, actually when you when you morph units into cocoons like this, as soon as the, they complete switching into Broodlords, they actually get all their health back. So it's also a very nice way to recycle the Corruptors um, rather than trying to transfuse them or just go for a Mass Corruptor style. And these will actually help deal with the Colossi to an extent by being able to provide a bit of sieging um, since the Colossi are already one-shotting the Zerglings anyway. Uh, Corruptors are coming out, more of them onto the field, and Madeline's going to start saturating her uh, her fifth base. The fifth, the bottom left base actually has been doing quite well on its own. Um, White Ross sends a Zealot to the left side. He actually does spot some of this creep. He hasn't seen the base, though. This may give him a couple of suspicions. He's going to check in the bottom left. He's actually going to go now and recheck that one, which is going to allow Madeline to start this hatchery, but a bit of a poke forward here. A couple Zerglings are going to get fried, and... Well, Madeline seems to be so careful now, knowing about Broodlord's Fleet Beacon coming in with two more Stargates. We could see White Ross switch into a lot of Tempest very quickly, which have been known to completely annihilate uh, Broodlord's. And White Ross, he's getting ready. He's going to push in towards the third base of Madalisk. This is going to be a very crucial moment in this game. Will Madalisk be able to take care of this army? Storm's dropping to keep the army of Madalisk away. And she is going to lose this base, no doubt about that. But White Raw's army is in a position to get stopped. The bottom left base getting hit with a Zealot run by at the same time, though. And now Madalus needs to kill everything right here. She has the army locked in for it now. But there are so many storms available. Storm hitting these Corruptors. Oh my goodness, so many of them falling low into the orange health. All the Zerglings going to get immediately fried by the storms and the Colossi. Um, the Broodlords and Corruptors, though, doing work on this army. The problem is they're slow. White Raw's army, it is not. He has a lot of money. He's going to immediately switch into Quadra Tempest production. And now the natural expansion under a lot of fire. Oh, these drones are stacked so hard. Uh, some of them barely managed to get away. But uh, White Raw pushing into the natural now. Going to move over towards the main base. The Broodlords and Corruptors, you know, they're, they're powerful. They ha she has a lot of upgrades. She has the plus three attack. And uh, the 3-3 the, the for the Broodlings, but by the time it takes White, her to kill White Rod's army, he's already going to have uh, a ton more prepared back at home with these Stargates. And now also getting the plus one air weapons, and White Rod's going to head over towards the fifth base of Matalus, killing off all of the economy. She barely has any drones left, only eight drones on the map. 79 probes exist, and it looks like we could have a 2-0 for our Ukrainian Protoss player. Matalus trying to snipe off... Uh, trying to pick off these units, trying to defend and get these Stalkers out of her base, but White Raw has killed all of her bases except for her main and natural, and there's no minerals left there. The hatchery finishes on the left side of the map, but she doesn't have enough money to make drones to mine there. In fact, does she, does she have? She has barely any drones. She doesn't have any uh, any mineral income to actually build more drones. And these uh, these Broodlords and Corruptors, this is basically going to be it. She's going to send everything to push. White Raw, though, even if he lost everything, does have this base on the right side of the map. The Zealots are going to run over towards the main base. And uh, Papa Ra is looking to end this game. So many Tempests coming onto the field. We already have <clears throat> six of them. We're poised outside of the natural expansion. And Matalus pushing forward. Going to be able to take out the Zealot at the Watchtower. And slowly making that, uh, that journey across the center of the map. Uh, she has sent some Zerglings over to defend this hatchery. She will send the only drones that she has to go mine there so that she can try to get some economy up. She has a 1.5k gas bank, but no minerals to burn that through. And oh, there's so many storms here. The, the Tempests are just so good versus Broodlords. Immediately going to start wheeling away at these. And with the AoE, the Corruptor's going to fall. There's the GG from Matalisk. And White Raw will take game number two, a quick 2-0 victory over Matalisk in this best of three in the dream hack. Stockholm Open. And uh, White Raw went for another very nice timing there. The Void was able to deny the third base. And Madalus trying to go for the counterattack with the Zerglings was not a bad play, but 
White Rod just defended his Nexus so well. He he made the expansion, he defensed it, and uh, that's uh, that's going to give him a 2-0 win in this series. So uh, hopefully you guys have enjoyed the games so far. The next match on this stream is going to be Queenie versus Zlord. So X X Lord, I guess not people pronunciations of his name another actual recent addition to xmg which we saw todd on earlier so hopefully you guys are enjoying the casting i am nathanius um hopefully you guys like my casting if you want to know a bit more about me um <clears throat> casting this casting the dream hack keep updates on match scores if you have to go somewhere you can follow me on twitter uh, i'm at quantic nate and you of course also can follow the stream cast lots of starcraft events and i'm very happy to be here casting this uh, big thanks to dream hack for putting this on so far of course uh, and our sponsors logitech uh, king sniper x and iso so we've had a lot of great games so far we'll be moving forward um very soon stay tuned don't go anywhere you're watching the dream hack iso open